Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I serve a good God. You serve a good God. He's not a sometimey God. Sometimes he's good, sometimes he's bad, sometimes he's hot, sometimes he's cold. Sometimes he likes you, and other times he don't like you. <laughs> but he's good all the time. Uh, he's the one that woke you up this morning, clothed in your right mind, with the activity of your limbs. Hallelujah. I say he's good all the time. All the time, all the time. He is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody said, when I think of the goodness of Jesus. <laughs> you know, I have to have all the music and everything, but when I meditate upon his goodness, there's a praise that comes forth. Because nobody can do you like Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. He's good all the time. <laughs> praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank God for another day of service. Thank God for another day of in-person service. <laughs> Amen. Along with our live streaming, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Some have said I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. We thank God for all of you who came out today. We came to praise the Lord. We came to give God glory and honor for the great and wonderful thing that he has already done. I love the Lord, and I really won't take that back. Hallelujah. Because he has been and he is good to me. We would like to welcome everyone in our live streaming audience and everyone in the sanctuary. We'd like to welcome you to another day of service here in Zion Temple, First Pentecostal Church at 3771 Reading Road here in Cincinnati, Ohio. And to everybody that's in here and everybody that is in there, Hallelujah. We say praise the Lord. Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is good. It's prayer time in the temple, and we're going to stand for prayer. And we're going to read our scripture reading, and then we will begin our message for today. Let us all stand in the presence of the Lord. If you have a prayer request, amen, you may lift your hands up to the Lord and tell him what you want. Amen. He can hear you. Hallelujah. He has a voice to hear you. And he has a spirit that goes to and fro throughout the earth listening to the prayers of God's people. Let every heart pray. Father God, I bow before you and thank you for the privilege to raise my hands toward you I thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness unto Zion Temple, First Pentecostal Church. I thank you, hallelujah, for your healing and your deliverance that you have given in this church. Every prayer that we have prayed, you have heard our prayers, hallelujah. And I thank you for touching the bodies of the saints and allowing them to come back to church one more time. I thank you for the visitors that are here today and on live streaming. I pray for them as well. Touch their bodies and heal them by the power of God. Those that are cast down, I pray that they will be lifted up. Those that are burdened, I pray that the burden that they have right now will go away, hallelujah, and joy will come within their hearts. Bless the word of the Lord today as we preach. Help us to preach what you want us to preach and help us to say what you want us to say. Bless your word today. Bless your servant. 
as we stand before this august body, use us for your honor and for your glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Open your Bibles, please, to the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 20. 2 Chronicles, chapter 20. And we're going to read verse 14 through 19. The book of 2 Chronicles. Amen. Everybody got it? Have some people got it? Yeah. <laughs> Is there anybody that's got it? Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 14. Let's begin reading together. Then unto Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jeiel, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, Hearken ye all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God. Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cleft of Ziz. <coughs> ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. Ye shall not fight, need to fight in this battle, but set yourself, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, neither be dismayed. Tomorrow go up against them, for the Lord will be with you. Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I know I hear, your, I hear the excitement in your voice already. <laughs> Our key verse, or our Sunday scripture verse, is verse 15. And he said, Hearken ye all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid, nor dismayed, by the reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. The battle is not yours, but God's. Hallelujah. I said the battle is not yours, but it's God. Hallelujah. 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 I hope you remember those few words that the battle is not yours, but it's God. Hallelujah. Many people today are trying to fight their own battle. Hallelujah. They have all types of things that are coming against them. They got the COVID-19, they got the, amen, social justice, they got, hallelujah, economic problems and difficulty. We have people killing no pe people for no reason at all. Yes, sir. Yes. And you might be driving down a highway and somebody don't like you because you're of the color of your skin and they might shoot into your car and keep on going. 
and road rage and disputes and fighting. We used to fight with fists. Now they fight with guns. Hallelujah. It's an evil, evil, evil time. Hallelujah. And we as children of God are right in the middle of it because we are trying to promote God's kingdom and we're trying to do the right thing and trying to live holy and trying to hold on to righteousness and godliness and the things that God wants us to do. But, hallelujah, it is an evil time. Hallelujah. And you don't have to be a bad person in order to get, hallelujah, violence and other things to happen to you. Hallelujah. If nothing is going on in your life right now, you are to shout hallelujah. <laughs> if you had a good week this week, you are to shout hallelujah. Because the news, all the news, all the news is bad news. Hallelujah. There are many fights and struggles that the saints are having right now that uh, they never had before. Some of them do not even imagine that this could happen in my family and in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I came to preach to you today that the battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. Hallelujah. We're going to read about and preach about a king whose name was Jehoshaphat. Hallelujah. Uh, I like Bible stories. Jehoshaphat was the son of Asa, hallelujah. He was 35 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned for a period of 25 years. Jehoshaphat was one of the best kings that they had in Judah. Judah had a total of 20 kings, but only six of them were good kings. Hallelujah. The Bible dictionary said that he was pious. <laughs> he was devoted. He was the most pious king that they had since Solomon was king. Hallelujah. He was prosperous. God made him to prosper. God gave him money. He didn't have to seek for money. When he became the king of Judah, they began to bring gifts to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But what I like about Jehoshaphat, I like the fact that God can give us prosperity. I like the fact that God can give us piety and favor with God and man. But what I like about him so much was that he, amen, loved God. Hallelujah. I said he loved God. He didn't love his money more than God. He didn't love his popularity more than God. He didn't love the good name that he had more than God, but he loved God. Yeah. Hallelujah. When he came to power, hallelujah, and when he came to the kingship, in 2 Chronicles 17, 1 through 6, the Bible said that Jehoshaphat reigned in Asa's said, and he strengthened himself against Israel. Israel was under the leadership of another king, and they were not following God, so he distanced himself from Israel and went out on his own and began to seek his God. He placed forces in all the 
fair cities of Judah and set garrisons in the land of Judah and in the cities of Ephraim, which Asa, his father, had taken. Number three, in chapter 17, the Lord was with Jehoshaphat because he walked in the first ways of his father David and sought not after Balaam. Hallelujah. He blessed him. Hallelujah. Number four, he sought the Lord God of his father and walked in the commandments and not after the doings of Israel. Verse five, therefore the Lord established the kingdom in his hand. Hallelujah. And all of Judah brought to Jehoshaphat presence and he had riches, he had honor in abundance. But his heart was lifted up in the ways of the Lord. Moreover, he took away the high places and the groves out of the land of Egypt. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The land of Judah. Satan, I rebuke him. Hallelujah. And in the book of 2 Chronicles 20, 30, and 32, 31 and 32, Jehoshaphat reigned over Judah. He was 35 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 25 years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Azabah, the daughter of Shilhai. And he walked in the ways of Asa, his father, and departed not from it, doing that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now it sounds like that he's going to be set forever. No problems, no difficulties. God is on his side. God is blessing his soul. He got money coming in. He has favor with other nations. Everything is going really good. Hallelujah. For Jehoshaphat. Now, I know I'm not talking about your situation. <laughs> but for Jehoshaphat, everything was going really well. And you would think that there wouldn't be nothing happen right now or nothing would come right now when he's riding on top of the ladder he's got a right relationship with god he loves god he is trying to get sin and idolatry out of the land and he's tried to clean everything up and he's sent the teaching levites throughout judah to teach the people the word of god but one day <laughs> uh, one day it came to pass in chapter 20 verse 1 that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other beside the Ammonites against Jehoshaphat to battle now you wonder why the test when you're trying to do your best. If you are sinning, if you are messing up, you can understand, well, God is just doing something to let me know he don't like what I'm doing. But when you're doing good, when you're coming to church, giving your tithe, doing everything that the Lord told you to do, when you love the Lord and you won't take it back, when your greatest desire is to be a good child of God, you don't have no distractions, you don't have a bunch of things leading you away from God. But all of a sudden, out of nowhere, come some people that want to have a battle with you. <laughs> Where'd they come from? 
I didn't hurt nobody. I'm on the love train. I'm not on the hate train. Hallelujah. But I want to tell you this, saints, in all sincerity, you can be the best saint that ever lived upon the face of the earth, but you're not going to get rid of your enemies. You can do everything right, and you're still going to have them. You can be nice as pie, and you're still going to have them. You can show love, and you're still going to have them, because that adversary stirs up people against the people of God. Hallelujah. They wanted to come in and, hallelujah, take Jehoshaphat, capture him and destroy the land and possess the land of Judah. Hallelujah. Big, great multitude of people. But I like Jehoshaphat. He said, there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, there's a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea and this side of Syria, and behold, they be in Haz, Haz of Razan, Tar Tamar, which is in Enjadi. Hallelujah. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord. And he proclaimed a fact. Hallelujah. Now I'm still sitting down and crying and say, I don't know why they don't like me. I don't know why they're coming against me. I don't know why this big multitude come to take me out of my own land and my people. But he said, I'm going to seek the Lord. <laughs> I'm going to go to the one that I believe can help me. I'm going to go to the one that I believe is really, really on my side. Hallelujah. He proclaimed a fast and he gathered all of the people together. And the Bible said in verse 4, to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Hallelujah. He not only proclaimed a fast, but he did some praying too. He didn't go without eating and go without drinking, but he put some prayer with his fast, and he began to pray to God and call on God. And I'm going to read some of his prayer, but in his prayer, he is petitioning God to remember them. Remember us, Lord. We're your children, Lord. If there is a God in heaven, remember us, Lord. If you are looking down upon our situation, remember us, Lord. If you see what we're going through, remember us, Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 5 in chapter 20. Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem and in the house of the Lord before the new court. Hallelujah. Verse 5, hallelujah. Verse 6, and he said, O Lord God of our fathers, art not thou God in heaven? That's a question. Aren't you God in heaven? Hallelujah. And rulest not thou over the kingdoms of the heathen? I believe that in thy hand uh, 
that there is power. Is there not power and might in your hand? Hallelujah. So that none is able to withstand thee. Hallelujah. Art not thou our God who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel and gave it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend forever. And they built a sanctuary therein under the administration of David, the king. They built a sanctuary for your name. Solomon prayed the longest prayer that was ever prayed and recorded in the Bible. And he said, if evil comes up against us as a sword, judgment, pestilence, famine, we stand before this house and in thy presence for thy name, thy name, is in this house and cry, and then thou hear, then thou wilt hear and help. We need your help, Lord. I said we need your help, Lord. We need your help, Lord. Please help us, Lord. Ah, Shana. I serve you, Lord. I'm not a heathen. I'm not Amen, doing the wrong thing, but my heart is fixed and my mind is made up. I'm not playing church. I'm not a hypocrite. I'm real. I'm for real. I'm serving you to at the best of my ability. And you see this great multitude that have come against us. I need you to help us. He said, I need you. Judah needs you. These little children of yours and their wives and the children, they need you. Hallelujah. And God heard <laughs> his prayer. Uh, the Lord spoke to me one time and I was walking through the room and I said, Lord, we just prayed about a certain situation and we pray that you will come through for us and we pray that you will give healing and deliverance. It was just like the voice of a man came down through the ceiling and said, I hear every prayer of the saint. Matter of fact, I got some golden vials up in heaven and I'm filling them up with the prayers of the saints. And in the tribulation period, and at the end of the world, we're going to pour out those prayers that came up from Zion and the prayers that came up from the people. Your prayers are not in vain. Your prayers are heard by God. Your prayers are in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. He said, I need to let them know that I heard their prayer. Then in verse 14, where our text was, then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Beaniah, the son of Jael, the son of Mattanai, the Levite, the sons of Asaph came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, Hearken ye all of Judah. Listen up, pay attention. And ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou king Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, be not afraid, neither dismayed 
by the reason of this great multitude. Why, Lord? For the battle is not yours, but it's God. You don't have to buy another gun. You don't have to employ the help of other people to fight this battle because I am the God of battle. Ooh, come on. I have a host that is able to help me. I got angels that can help me. I got mother nature that can help me. And if that ain't enough, I will display a power that you have never ever seen. I am omnipotent. I am all powerful. Why are you afraid? Why are you dismayed? The bigger they are, the harder they fall. Woo. There's nobody too big that I cannot bring them down. There is no enemy so strong that I cannot defeat them. I know how. I know when to defeat them. I got power over your enemy. Dry your tears. Go to sleep tonight. Fix you a nice meal. Take the worry from your mind. Stop being so fretful about what you see. They are nothing for me. Uh, all I have to do is decree it, and it is so. You're trying to fight your own battle. You need to let God do it. You're trying to defeat the enemies that are coming against you. You need to let God do it. You're trying to figure out what your next move is. Your next move is to proclaim a fast in your life, and your next move is to bow down before the God of heaven and call upon his name and tell him, Lord, I need you. That's your next move. Hmm. Seek me. Ask for my help. I want to help you. I want to help Zion. Not just the pastor and his wife, but I want to help the whole church. But you got to approach me with a sincere heart, with a broken spirit with a submission to the will of God. Lord, I can't fight this by myself. I need help. It's too much for me, Lord. I need help. Help me, Lord. Bring me through. Fight my enemy. There's too many of them. If it was one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two, -on -two, I might have a chance, but against Hallelujah, Moab, and Ammon, and the people of Mount Seir, that's just a little bit too much. God said, the battle is not yours. 
If you try to win it, you're going to lose. But if you depend on me, you're going to win. You shall gloriously triumphant over the enemies of your soul. If you let me help you. He said, tomorrow get ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz and he tells him where to find them. <laughs> I like the way the scripture explains itself. You don't have to search all over the place to see where the multitude is. You heard about the multitude, but you don't know where it's at. But I'm going to give you directions. Go down by the cliff of Ziz, and you'll find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. But don't fight. Get fight out of your mind. Get defending yourself out of your mind. Hallelujah. Ye shall have no need to fight this battle. Just set yourselves, just make it look like you're getting ready to fight, but just stand still, stand right there. Don't move. Don't lift no weapons. Don't lift up your mouth against them. Don't do nothing. Just stand there and wait. And I promise you that you will see the salvation of the Lord with you. O oh, Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed, for tomorrow go out against them. For the Lord <laughs> will be with you. Hallelujah. The next day they appointed singers. They asked, they, asked the, they asked the praise team. We, we're going to have a good old fashioned <laughs> praise and worship service. We ain't going to worry about all the multitude. We ain't going to worry about where they come from and how many there is. We're going to have a praise service. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to praise the Lord for the beauty of his holiness. Yeah. And as they went out before the army, we're going to say, praise the Lord for his mercy and do a fair. Hallelujah. And while they were praising the Lord and thanking the Lord, hallelujah, the Lord began to work with these children of Mount Seir, Moab, and Ammon. I'm going to fast forward. They began to fight each other. All the big multitude that was going to wipe him out, take him out of Judah, repossess the land of Judah, started fighting with each other. Now who started it? The Lord. Jehoshaphat didn't start that. 
But the praise, as they began to pray the Lord, the Lord not only said, the battle is not yours, but God, but he started to get in the, into gear, what he was talking about. <laughs> And one, hallelujah, Ammon and Mount Seir started fighting each other. And when they were done, hallelujah, they had smoked one another. Now imagine seeing all that multitude and all of a sudden they're not there anymore. Dead bodies laying on the ground. Did Jehoshaphat do anything? No, all he did was proclaim a fast and he asked the Lord to help him. And then those Levites prophesied through the Spirit of the Lord, I heard you and you won't have to fight this battle because it's not yours, but it's God. They came against God. They didn't come against you. They came against God because they were God's people. And God had given them the land and Joshua and the Levites had already barked up the land and gave it to them. That land was supposed to be theirs forever. There was no get out of your land and let me have it. But God said, I'm going to make them kill each other. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir and utterly, <laughs> utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Mount Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. And when they got there, when they got there, there were dead bodies all over the earth, and none of them had escaped. Who did it? God did. Yeah. Who gave the victory? God gave. Yeah. Who defeated Judah's enemies and Jehoshaphat's enemies? God did it. He never had to shoot one bullet. He never had to attack anybody, verbally or physically to get them off of his back because God did it. Yeah, yeah. In my conclusion, God gave the victory to Jehoshaphat and to Judah. And guess what? It took them three days. <laughs> uh, this is all. But, but it took them three days to gather up all the sport. And on the fourth day, they went to a valley and they named the valley uh, let me get the name for you. Biraka. Hallelujah. He said, For there they blessed the Lord. Therefore, the name of the same place was called the Valley of Biraka. Hallelujah. Four days to pick up the spoil that was on the ground. 
four days to get all of those jewels, all of that gold. And Jehoshaphat already had money. He didn't need no money because they gave him presents. But God gave them a bonus for calling on him, for depending on him, and for allowing him to fight the battle instead of them fighting it for themselves. Bonus. Bonus. God bless all of you. Heaven smile upon you. Is our prayer. Let's say it one more time. The battle is not yours, but God. Want to say that one more time? The battle is not yours, but God. Woo, Walk in your victory in the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you.